Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Andrew and today I want to make a full comprehensive guide to starting Amazon FBA in 2019. While I'm going to make this video as comprehensive as I can, there's only so much I can cover in one video. So if you are serious about starting this business and you want every bit of information you need to start it, then I recommend investing in a course. If you want to know the course I did, just drop me a message and I'd be more than happy to share it with you. Firstly, a little bit about my own FBA journey. My first product has been made and is going to be shipped by sea on the 15th of April and I have two other products that are currently being manufactured and should be done within the next two weeks. Now I'm going to be putting in as much value as possible into this video so I'd really appreciate if you took a second to drop a like. With that said, grab a coffee, get comfy and enjoy this full guide to Amazon FBA UK 2019. So this is the complete guide to selling on Amazon FBA in the UK and EU marketplaces in 2019. But for the most part all the information I cover will also be applicable to the US marketplace. It's just the UK and EU markets are the ones I'm going to be selling in. So so this guide is aimed primarily at them. So firstly, who am I? Well, I'm a 19 year old from the UK, as I mentioned before. Um, I finished my A-levels last summer and decided against going to university because I found my passion was for entrepreneurship and specifically online businesses really fascinated me. Currently working as a builder slash labourer for my dad, building a house to help fund my business. And I'm in the process of starting my first Amazon FBA private label brands, as I mentioned before. The picture at the bottom is me and my brother in front of a helicopter. Now, don't worry, that is not our helicopter. That was just an experience day we did and yeah it was a really good experience really motivating but yeah that's just me and my brother okay so why am I making this guy well I want to help friends and family understand this business model I've had a lot of people reach out to me and ask for specific advice on different aspects of it so I wanted to just create a whole video that just encompasses the whole process I've also personally spent the past six months researching Amazon FBA you know becoming really fascinated with it and I want to start sharing some of my experience some of the things I've learned along the way with people also I just want to share what an incredible opportunity that Amazon FBA FBA is right now and I just want to encourage as many people to get on board with it. I've also been lucky enough to have the opportunity to learn from six and seven figure sellers and I want to sort of distill some of the information they've taught me and share it with you. Okay so what is the Amazon opportunity? Well if you look at the graph on the bottom right there you can see the blue line shows Amazon's revenue growth year on year and also their net income or profit and as you can see their revenue has been growing at a massive rate for the past four years now and since 2016 over 50% of revenue comes from third party sellers like you and me. So what this means is Amazon is reliant on these third party sellers, you know, these people doing Amazon FBA to sustain their revenue growth. As a result, if Amazon is going to continue to grow at the rate they are doing, they actually need you to succeed. Now, while this is showing Amazon's international growth, I want to really focus on Amazon's UK growth. As you can see in the bottom right, that is Amazon's UK revenue growth year on year. And as you can see, their rate of growth has again been really strong. So Amazon's UK revenue is increasing at a massive rate. And Amazon UK is still years behind their US market. So that means lower competition and larger growth potential. You know, I think Amazon US accounts for around 60% of their revenue, whereas the UK is more like 7 8%. So by getting on board now, you're going to be able to experience Amazon's massive growth in the UK market. Okay, so if this is your first time hearing about Amazon FBA, I'll just quickly go over what it actually is. Firstly, FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon, and this is essentially where you ship your product to Amazon. You then list your product for sale on the Amazon website. Amazon then fulfills, so they actually go and pick the item out of their warehouse and an employee will go do that they pack it so they put the shipping address on and all that and they actually ship your product to the person who bought it and this is whenever someone buys it off Amazon and these diagrams do a really good job of just simplifying the whole process so what actually is private labeling now I don't know about you but when I was first learning about this business model I just thought of Amazon as a place for existing brands to sell their products so you know you'd go buy some Nike shoes or some Lego sets I never really considered the fact that you could actually create a brand and sell it on Amazon but that is what private Private labeling essentially allows you to do. So what you do is you find an existing product. So let's take the example of these bento boxes in the bottom right. You then add branding to it in some way. So maybe a logo, custom packaging or modifying the product in some way. And what this does is increases the perceived value. So the product on the left sells for £17 and the product on the right sells for £27. And I don't know if you can see but the product on the right has their logo etched on the lid and they also have it on the tag as well. And it's true, you know, we're more inclined to buy products that have, you know, clear brand you know look high quality essentially as opposed to ones that have no branding no logo and they look like they've just come straight from China with nothing being done to them so essentially with private labeling you are creating a new brand okay let's start off with the business basics now I've had a few people ask me do you need to start a business to start Amazon FBA 
And while strictly you don't, you can start as an individual. My advice is always start as you mean to go on. So if you actually intend to build this into a six, seven, eight figure business, then you should register as a business. One of the main reasons for this is the tax benefits. You know, if you were to do a hundred thousand pound in profit in one year and you weren't registered as a business, then that would be taxed as income. So you'd be paying the 40, 45% income tax rate. Whereas if you're registered as a business, you'll be paying the corporation tax rate of 19%. So as you can see, the difference in tax you'll be paying is massive. And for a business really relying on cash flow and keeping money inside the business, then this amount of money is massive. Also, a lot of people seem to think the process of starting a business is hard or complicated, but it's been made really easy. So personally, I used a website called yourcompanyformations.co.uk and I'll just show you now how I did it. Okay, so this is Your Company Formations. Um, there are other websites out there for starting businesses, but this is who I used. Okay, so all you've got to do is pick a company name. So this really doesn't matter. It's only going to be really you and maybe your accountant that sees this name. This name isn't going to be shown on your actual Amazon product page. So don't really think too much about it. So I've just gone with Andrew's Trading Company Limited here. It's also quite important if you're starting a private limited company, which we will be doing, um, you need to include this LTD at the end, which just stands for private limited company. So click search name. Okay, so this name hasn't been taken, so we can go ahead and continue with this. Next, you've got to choose a company package. Now, I personally went with the privacy one for one main reason is that they give you a registered service address. So if someone were to go onto your Amazon page, go onto your storefront and then actually find your business address, then it would have to be your home address if you didn't have this option. Whereas by having a registered service address, we use your your company formations address and this just gives us a greater degree of privacy so I'm gonna go ahead and click this one so now you can choose some optional extras um, I don't usually tend to go with any of these I think I went with the free 75 pound Google AdWords voucher because why not so I'll have that to use at some point and you can get an accountant consultation if that's something you're interested in but anyway as part of this order we're gonna get our company incorporation obviously we're gonna get an actual physical copy of the certificate of incorporation and after that just agree to the terms and conditions and click checkout after this you'll also have to put in details details about the director, shareholder and secretary. So just so just put in your details for the most part. And if it asks about shareholders, just do whatever is applicable to you. If you're not sure about any of the sages, just contact them and I'm sure they'll be able to help. Next up, you may want to get insurance. Now, from what I'm aware, the main insurance you're going to need is product liability insurance. And this covers you if your product causes harm to someone in some way or, you know, someone would sue you because of something that your product did to them. So yeah, this safeguards you if you are sued due to issues arising from your product. Next up, there's public liability insurance, and this is just a more general form of business insurance. The usual cost is between 20 and 100 pound a month, depending on the size of your business and what you need. You can go with an insurance company like Aviva, or you can go with an insurance broker, which will obviously be more expensive, but you're gonna be getting that more one-on-one -on -one support. So if we have a look on the Aviva website and look up public liability insurance, it gives you an explanation for what you'll be covered for and all that. And as you can see, as part of the package, you're getting products liability insurance. Finally, of course, I'm not a legal professional, so speak to a professional if you're unsure. Okay, another admin task you are going to need to do is you're going to need to set up the Amazon Seller Central account. Now, this is what you use to list and manage your entire Amazon FBA business. What I recommend is you start as the basic account, which is free. So if you have a look at that little column there, it's the second column. So this is more aimed towards people that are selling under 35 items a month. But the reason I recommend this is, you know, you're not going to be selling immediately at this stage. You know, it might take another one, two, three months. So you don't want to be paying the £30 a month for the professional account during this time. That was a mistake I made, but I contacted Amazon support and they were able to refund me the two months when I wasn't selling. But you may as well just start as a basic plan and then upgrade it to the professional account when you're ready to start selling. You'll also need to link your limited business to your Amazon Seller Central account at this point. I didn't do this at first because when I started, started I started as an individual but I was able to go in and add the limited business after but I recommend doing it as soon as you create your Amazon Seller Central account. Okay just a couple other admin tasks you may want to look into. Firstly you might want to look into finding an accountant you know they're going to be able to help you a lot with VAT and tax advice and also just general financial decisions they'll be able to help you a lot with that. I'd also recommend getting a credit card slash charge card to pay for fees and expenses. The only real option you have if you're selling in the UK is the Amex business charge card and what this is is it's slightly different to a credit card in that at the end of every month you have to pay off the balance in full whereas with a credit card you don't have to pay off at the end of every month but if you don't you're going to be racking up a lot of interest so the benefit of using a charge card over a credit card is it forces you to be quite strict with your expenses 
And of course you get perks in the form of points that you can redeem on flights, shopping and just other kinds of expenses. Of course this is not necessary but it just is an added bonus to be receiving money for money that you would spend anyway. Okay I'll just show you the Amex website. Um, this is their business gold card and as you can see you get 20,000 bonus points if you spend £3,000 in the first three months. And if we scroll down you can see this is the equivalent of two economy return flights from London to a European destination. So to me it just seems like a no brainer you know you're going to be spending this money anyway on PPC and other expenses so you may as well get some kind of benefit for it anyway. Okay, so now you hopefully know what Amazon FBA is, what private labeling is, you know, you've got your business set up. So the next stage, of course, is finding a product. Firstly, I'm going to show you what I'd say is an ideal product. Now, by no means does this mean that every product you source has to fit all these criteria, but these are just a few of the things I look for to best support my product being profitable. So firstly, there are two fee structures for FBA products. There are the standard products and then there are oversized products. There are two things that determine whether your product goes into the standard category or oversized category and these are the weight and the volume. Ideally we want to be finding products that go into the standard category because the FBA fees we'll be paying when a customer buys our product are going to be a lot lower so our profit margins are going to be a lot better. So if you type in Amazon FBA UK fees you'll find this website and if you scroll down you can actually find out how much it would cost to fill your product based on its weight and size. Okay in this example we've gone for a product that will cost over £9 that is a standard parcel size and is 0 to 150 grams and as you can see it will cost two pound and two pence to fulfill this product now this is in the standard size category but if we move over to the oversized category and we're looking more at a product that's going to be you know up to 760 grams and maybe in the standard oversized category then we're looking at more four pound 65 for amazon to fulfill this order now of course this is going to increase our cost to sell this product on amazon so we'd have to be selling at a higher price to get the same kind of profit margins Okay, so some of the things I look for in a product is it being small, so I look for something that could fit in a shoebox theoretically, something that's light, so ideally under 400 grams, and also something that's priced between 12 and 30 pound on Amazon. Now I find this to just be the sweet spot because anything under 12 pound and your profit margins are going to start to deteriorate with the Amazon fees. Whereas over £30, people are just less likely to buy an impulse buy, you know, they're more likely to think about it. But somewhere in this range, you know, £20, £25, I think is the sweet spot in that people, if they see it, they're just going to buy it on an impulse. And also the profit margins are going to be very healthy. I recommend you look up the Amazon FBA UK fees just to make sure your product won't go into the oversized category. You know, it only has to be one gram over, one centimetre too big. You know, they're really strict about this. You know, if they pull your product and weigh it and see it's a gram over, then it will get moved into the oversized category. So yeah, just something for you to check. You know, if you're worried your product might go into the oversized size category just tell your supplier it needs to be under this weight okay next up we've got product restrictions and i think this is something not a lot of people really consider at first so what kind of restrictions are there on the kinds of products you can sell on amazon firstly there are patents and i recommend if you're worried your product might be patented then you just pay someone on fiverr to check for the patents or you can use something called google patents just look it up and search up the kind of product you're going to be selling and it'll tell you if there are any patents pending or existing for that product so the two kinds of patents you need to be aware of are utility patents which is how something is used and design patents, which is the appearance or shape of a product. You know, I've heard a horror story from someone I met who um, was starting on Amazon FBA and his first product was a Ionic shower head, I believe. And he started selling, it was doing really well, but one day he got a cease and desist and he basically lost a lot of money on that product. Often what will happen is you'll see this product on Amazon, you'll see the numbers are really good and they'll seem to be like a load of new sellers, you know, they'll all have like 10, 20, 30 reviews, but they'll all be selling really well. And then maybe every few months, this person who's got a patent on that kind of product will just come in, send a load of cease and desist and all of them will be wiped straight off the Amazon marketplace. And then the cycle will just repeat itself with new sellers coming in and then them getting wiped out again. So you want to make sure you're not one of these people, you know, do your due diligence, make sure there are no patents for your product. Next up, you need to check for copyrights and this is more for intellectual property. So this is more to do with the protection of creative content and branding materials. So some obvious things you shouldn't do are steal competitors' photos or slogan or brand name. Just make sure you're being original and not blatantly ripping someone off and you should be fine with this. Of course, just a little disclaimer, I'm not a legal professional, you know, check with a legal professional for advice on this. Okay, next what I recommend you do is a seasonality check. And by this I mean, work out is your product a fad or is it growing in popularity? For this, I like to use Google Trends or Google AdWords. So all you gotta do is go on, type in Google Trends, search the product you wanna sell, put it in the United Kingdom or whatever marketplace you're looking at, do it over the past five years. And as you can see with this example, fidget spinners, you know, they came out of nowhere early 2017 became really popular you know i'm sure a lot of people were getting really excited sourcing this product but then within a few months it basically died down and i know there was loads of people stuck with loads of fidget spinners that they basically couldn't sell so try to work out where your product is in its life cycle you know is it a new growing trending product is it a mature product or is it dying 
Also, just be aware, if you're doing product research in Q4, so that's October, November, and December, the demand figures you're gonna see are probably gonna be inflated. So obviously don't start sourcing Christmas decorations in December, expecting them to sell really well in July. You know, certain products just sell well at certain times of the year. And while you can make a lot of money at that times of the year, I would personally prefer to have a kind of product that will just sell really well all year round. Okay, so what kind of products should you avoid? Well, I'll just say that these products can do well, but I just wouldn't recommend them for a first product. There's just gonna be a lot more things that could go wrong, you know, a lot more hoops to jump through, but this creates a barrier to entry, so once you're a bit more experienced, these kind of products can make a lot of money. Firstly, I'd advise against going into a gated category. So these are categories on Amazon that you need to get approval for to sell them. So for example, if you were to sell some kind of cosmetics or supplements, basically some kind of product that would go on or in your body, then you're gonna to need to get approval from Amazon. And this is usually in the form of multiple sales invoices, so proof that you've sold the product successfully before. And obviously there are ways to circumvent this, you know, get invoices aren't particularly legit, but I definitely wouldn't recommend this, you know, you are trying to build a legitimate business here. So just make sure they're not gated. I'll show you a way how you can do this later on in the video, but basically all you gotta do is actually create the listing as if you were to sell that product, leave it up for a week or two, and if it's gated, Amazon will likely tell you, hey look, you know, you need to get approval for this product. So just make sure they're not gated. I'll show you a way how you can do this later on in the video, but basically all you gotta do is actually create the listing as if you were to sell that product, leave it up for a week or two, and if it's gated, Amazon will likely tell you, hey look, you know, you need to get approval for this product. Or also you could just contact Amazon seller support, literally just ask them, can I sell this product? And they'll tell you whether it's gated or not. Next, I'd advise against electronics. You know, there's just a lot of things that could go wrong with them. You know, you've got the charging, the plugs, the batteries. So I would just advise against that. Anything that can be easily broken. So glass, for example, you know, at the end of the day, these are being shipped from China in big cargo ships. So, you know, there's a lot of knocking and moving about they're going to be doing. So they could easily be broken. This risk can be reduced by making sure your supplier packages all your goods properly. But for your first product, you're not necessarily going to know what kind of packaging your product's going to need to make sure it's safe. So I would just advise against this for a first product. Okay. So now you've got an idea for the kind of products we're looking for, and you also know the kind of products to avoid, we can start moving on to product research. Now this is by far the aspect of this business that you are gonna spend the most time on. So like I said, this is the most important factor in your FBA success. So you can do everything else right, but if your product sucks, you know, if it's patented, if there's something that stops you from being able to sell it well, then you're gonna be in trouble. Now there are three main paid tools that people use for this. There's Jungle Scout, Viral Launch, and Helium 10. Now there are three ways to do product research and I'll link in the top right a video I did which showing just that. I've personally used them all and they all work. I found products with all of them, but right now I'm enjoying Helium 10 because it just offers so many other features for Amazon sellers. So I'll show you how to do product research with Helium 10. Okay, so this is Helium 10. Now I've done a whole video showing all the different features that I'll link in the top right if you wanna go see that. But right now we're just gonna be using their black box tool, which is their product research tool. Now I mentioned this was a paid tool, but if you go onto the Helium 10 website, which I'll link in the description, sign up, you actually get to use all their tools on a limited basis. So you could potentially find your first product without having to pay anything. But if you wanna get unlimited access to all their tools, and once you get selling, I mean, all of these features are gonna be well worth it anyway, then just go up to the plan details section. I personally go with the platinum plan, because it gives you full access to all their tools. And if you use my affiliate code Lowe's50 in the coupon code section, hit apply, you get 50% off for your first month and you'll also be helping me out. Okay, so head over to Helium 10, click black box. And as you can see, this is their product research software. And the reason we use product research software is because I think Amazon currently has a billion products listed on their website. And when we're looking to find a product for Amazon FBA, it's got to hit some quite specific criteria. So by using product research software, we can go in and specify those criteria. So, you know, the price, revenue, you the kind of categories of products we want to sell in and what this software will do is crawl through all the products listed on Amazon and return back all the ones that meet our criteria so it basically makes the whole process of finding products a lot more efficient and a lot easier now in terms of the criteria I use firstly you're gonna to want to change the marketplace to the UK if you're looking for products in the UK marketplace in terms of the categories like the ones I would recommend are automotive baby products garden and outdoors health and personal care home and kitchen pet supplies sports and outdoors and toys and games you know you can look look in the other categories, but categories like PC and video games and musical instruments, things like them, you're just less likely to find potential private label products. Now, don't get me wrong, there probably are a few in there and I'd recommend, you know, having a look if you've got a bit of free time. But in terms of the categories that have the most potential private label products, it's gonna be them ones. So I'll just look in the pet supplies category. Now for the monthly revenue, this is just the amount of revenue the product is getting every month on Amazon. So I like to personally look between the low 2000s up to around the high six to seven thousands. Next up in terms of the price, we're gonna look for that sweet spot, so between 12 and 30 pounds. In terms of the review count, this is a good indication of the level of competition and the maturity of that market for a certain product. 
So you know if there's a certain product where the top sellers all have over a thousand five star reviews, then it's likely a very mature market and it's gonna be much harder to come in as a new seller with zero reviews and start getting that kind of sales volume. So I tend to look for under 100 reviews. Helium 10 also gives you the ability to select the shipping size tier. So like I showed earlier in the video, there's two categories for products on Amazon. There's the standard size and the oversize. So we're just gonna look for products in the standard size. Now we could click search, but you've also got these advanced filters here that lets you tailor down the kind of products you wanna find even more. Other things I like to include is the price change. So this looks at the price change over the past 90 days. So I tried to look for a positive price change. So just put a zero there and you're only gonna get positive price changes. Sales to reviews can be a good one because this tells you for every extra review a product gets, how many extra sales they are getting so if for every extra review they get they get another 10 sales and that would be a sales to review ratio of 10 and this would be really strong so i'll put in a minimum of three the best sellers rank this is information that amazon actually gives on all their products and it basically says in every category that a product sells in where they are ranked in terms of the amount of sales they do compared to the other products in that category so if a product has a number one best sellers rank in the pet supplies category then they are the top seller for products in the pet supplies category so I'll go for a maximum of 2,000. Number of images can be a good one because this is a good indication of how well optimized a listing is. Now, Amazon gives you a maximum of nine images. So you know if you put in a maximum of three, then these are listings that have not been properly optimized because the data shows that the more high quality images a listing has, the more sales that product will get. Okay, so I'll go with that. I also like to use the exclude title keywords. So basically any words you put in, you are basically saying you don't wanna see any products that include that keyword in their title. So I'll often put in brands, so like Nike, or Adidas just because when we're looking for private label products we don't want to see big name brands you know we want to find the smaller sort of newer brands because we can actually compete with them and then just hit search okay so there were no products that met these criteria and I suspect it was because the number of images you know not many listings on Amazon gonna have less than three images so I'm gonna just increase that to the maximum click search again and yeah now we've got nine products okay now we've got a list of nine potential products so as you can see we can just go down so we've got this sweetie bungee dog lead a dog car seat cover so I'll have a look at that so whenever I see one that I'm in Interesting. you can click pin and that'll just save it basically or you can just click the image and that will bring up the Amazon product listing there's also a dog car seat so we can have a look at that as you can see these two products are doing 4800 pound in revenue and 5500 pound in monthly revenue so they are really good revenue figures to shoot for you know they'll probably be doing around 2000 pound in profit every month and in terms of the criteria you know it's light it's 2.65 pounds you know I assume it'll be fairly small when it's folded up it's definitely in that sweet spot for the price you know 21 pound 25 pound it's like really where you want the product price to be and the reviews are also really low at 20 and 16 okay so so this product research software has allowed us to find one product that meets our criteria but if we were to look to sell a similar kind of product we're not really interested in if one product is doing really well we want to see a market with a lot of products doing the kind of numbers we want to see so next up what you're going to want to get is a chrome extension so this is the helium 10 chrome extension jungle scout also do one but i think it's about 200 dollars, and i think you get this for free so basically just go onto this website the chrome web store type in helium 10 and install this chrome extension and what this is going to allow you to do is when you go on to an amazon page for example click up here on the extension, click x-ray. And as you can see, this gives you a table with all the important data. But this extension is most powerful for comparing the data of lots of products. So what we're gonna try and do is find the market for this product. So what we're gonna try and look for is the main keyword in this title. Usually it's gonna be one of the first words or phrases in the title because this helps with the organic search results, which we're gonna talk about later in the video. So here I would say it's dog car seat cover. So just copy that and paste it. And we wanna search in all departments. So we're gonna search for dog car seat cover in all departments. Now, if we were to run the Chrome extension, so again, go up Helium 10 Chrome extension, X-Ray. Now, for some reason, all the data isn't loading properly, but all the ones that have loaded, you can see the revenue figure here, 5,000 here, 4,800, 6,000, 4,000. So really strong revenue. The price, again, is in that sweet spot range of around 20 pounds. And the reviews are slightly on the higher end. You know, you got one here doing the 26 reviews, which we found. It's 56 down here. But all in, I would say this definitely could be a really good potential FBA product. Okay, so far, this product has ticked all the boxes. But the next thing we want to find out is, is it going to be profitable to source and sell this product on Amazon and to find this out we're going to need to find out how much it's going to cost to source this product so what we're going to do is search for dog car seat covers in the search box click search next what I like to do is under supplier types tick trade assurance and what this does is only show suppliers that are offering trade assurance now what trade assurance is is a payment protection system that Alibaba has in place which basically forms a contract between you and the supplier that says if they don't deliver the quality of the goods you ask for or they don't deliver on time then you'll be entitled for a refund so I I personally always use trade assurance and recommend you do too so i just want to be searching for suppliers that are offering this okay now what we're going to do is just 
scroll through and try to find an average kind of price for this product. Okay, so I'm seeing three to nine dollars, five dollar eighty, six dollars. Okay, so I'm thinking you'd be able to source this product for around six dollars and in pounds that is four pounds sixty. Okay, next up, what you're gonna want to look up is the Amazon FBA UK revenue calculator. Okay, all we gotta do is grab the ASIN for the kind of product we're looking to sell. So this is just a unique code that Amazon uses to identify all the products on their platform. So you can find this in the URL of every product. So just look up and it's this string of characters starting in a capital B usually. So just copy that and put it in this search box here and hit search. As you can see, it's brought up the product with all the dimensions and weight. So what we can do now is fill in the Amazon fulfillment section because that's what we're going to be using. That just means FBA in this case. We can put in the item price, cost to deliver it to Amazon and the cost of the product. And this will tell us how profitable this product would be. So say we'd sell this for $19.99. The item weight is 1.2 kilograms. So a little on the higher end for what we look for, but you'd be able to ship this by sea from China for around a pound a unit. So the cost to deliver to Amazon, we're just going to put in a pound. And for the cost of the product, we're going to put in £4.60 and then hit calculate. With these numbers, as you can see, we'd be getting £8.79 profit per unit at a 44% profit margin. When I'm using this FBA calculator, I tend to only consider products that are showing over a 40% profit margin. And this is just because when you account for VAT, duties, taxes, and other PPC expenses, then the actual profit margin will be closer to 30%. This is still a perfectly acceptable profit margin for an FBA product. Okay, so you found your product, but now a question you need to ask yourself is how can you improve it? What you need to do today to guarantee that your product is going to sell is find a way to improve the customer experience in such a way Way that every customer that sees your product will automatically buy it over the competition. So there are different ways to do this, but one of the best ways is to bundle. So this is essentially where instead of just offering the single product, you also bundle it with a related product. So in this example, I've gone with yoga straps with a yoga mat. This is an incredibly powerful way to make your listing stand out above all the competition. Of course, the product has to be somewhat related, but if you can answer the question, what other product would improve the customer experience and bundle it with your original product, then it will likely sell well. Next up, a great way to improve your product is to improve the quality or design. So this is of course going to depend on the product but in this example I've gone with making a flask larger with using high quality materials. All you've got to do to achieve this is just ask the supplier hey look I want to make it this big I want to use this kind of materials. It will cost a bit more to do it this way but if you can communicate to customers that your product is superior in some way then they are much more likely to buy your product over the competition even if it's a higher price. Next up something I like to look for is the frequently bought together section. On every Amazon product listing if you just scroll down there is a frequently bought together section and this basically shows you the kinds of products that customers are likely to buy together and this is showing you that customers are having to buy multiple products to solve their need so if you can offer both those products as part of your package then your product is going to be solving their need better and they're much more likely to buy from you finally another thing you can do is include an ebook you know this is a free way to improve the customer experience so for example if you are selling tupperware boxes in my opinion it would make sense to create an ebook showing different recipes that you can make with those tupperware boxes again it will just improve the overall customer experience okay next up you're going to want to contact suppliers to find the best one for you so three websites that are good for this are Alibaba, DHgate and 1688. Alibaba is the main one and it's the one I pretty much always use. 1688 is more for Chinese speaking people finding Chinese suppliers but for the most part you're just going to stick with Alibaba. I recommend using a template and sending it out to 10 to 20 suppliers. I'm not going to go through the specific template I use in this video but if you just search online Alibaba supplier template I'm sure you'd find something that's quite suitable. So yeah I would send this to 10 to 20 suppliers, try and get a price from all of them and then make a spreadsheet with all the supplier names and all the different prices. I would then try and whittle it down to around two to three suppliers based on the price, the communication and the speed at which they're able to reply. Then something that's really important is that you order samples from these suppliers. So just tell them you're going to want to get a sample. It's going to be anywhere in between 20 and 100 pounds. So just pay this by PayPal and just also tell them to have the cost reimbursed on future orders. So this way, when you place a full order, you'll have your sample cost deducted. So you'll essentially be getting it for free. Okay. And things you're going to want to negotiate on are the price, the lead time. So this is how long it takes for them to manufacture your product. And more of an advanced tactic would be on the payment terms themselves. So typically you're going to be paying 30% down for them to make the goods. And once they've been made, you'll pay the remaining 70% balance. But if you've been working for a supplier for a longer time, you may be able to negotiate that they create the whole order and then you pay the 100% on completion. And this will really help with cash flow. One thing I will say is don't be too afraid to negotiate on price, but don't be too aggressive that they are having to find ways to cut costs to get a profit margin. Usually I try to negotiate down between 10 and 20% on the first price that they give me. This way I'm getting the best price possible and they're still making a profit. Now in terms of choosing a supplier, these are some of the things I would consider. Are they willing to make improvements? You know, if you ask, you know, you want a different kind of material, a different kind of design, are they willing to do that for you. If that's important to me and they say they're not willing to do it, then I probably wouldn't consider them. Next up, are they responsive to my messages? I recommend you try to get them on Skype because they're often a lot more responsive on Skype, but as a minimum, you want 
to be getting a response within one working day. Also, just as a side note, it's okay to discuss details on Skype, but when it comes time to be making the order, you want to move them back over to Alibaba's messaging system. Because of Alibaba's trade assurance terms, they will only consider messages sent on their platform as part of the order requirements. So basically, you can't use Skype messages as proof that they haven't fulfilled your order. Next up, was there any issues with the sample? I mean, this would be a massive red flag to me. You know, if the sample comes and I've broken it within a minute, then I just wouldn't go with the supplier. What lead times they're offering and whether there's any flexibility on this. So if one supplier is offering a 30 day lead time and then the other is offering a 60 day, I'm gonna be a lot more inclined to go with the 30 day supplier. Also, as I mentioned, the payment terms are usually 30% of your total order is paid first and then they produce the goods and then you'll pay the remaining 70% on completion. So as an example, an order of a thousand units for a three pound product, you'd be paying the 900 pounds initially, so the 30%, and then once the order's complete, you'd pay the remaining 2,100 pound. Never accept paying 100% upfront. If you say you're not willing to do this and they're not listening, then just walk away. I recommend you use a purchase contract to encourage professionalism on their end. This probably isn't gonna be legally binding, but it just encourages them to act more professionally with you and treat you more as a big business. So basically what this should include is real detailed specifications for the product you want, the agreed upon lead time, the total cost, and any other requirements you have as part of the order. And just send it to them, tell them to sign, date, and put their company stamp on it, because all companies in China have a company stamp. Have them do this, scan it, send it back to you, and you can sign and date it as well. Okay, next up I'm gonna show you how to create a product listing on Amazon. So this is the Amazon Seller Central dashboard, so when you sign up and create an account, this is what you'll see. So to create a new product listing, all you've got to do is hover over on catalog and click add products. Now, since we are creating a new product listing for a new brand that we're creating, we want to go to create a new product listing. Now, if we're going to use the example of the dog car seat, what we got to do is go into the product categories and find the most appropriate subcategory for this product. So for this, obviously, it's going to be in pet supplies and then dogs and then carriers and travel products, car travel accessories and then maybe booster seats. So once you've found the right subcategory for your product, just click select. Next up, what you're gonna to need to get is the product ID, and this is gonna be the unique identifier for your product. So for this, essentially what you're gonna to need to get is your own barcode. So I'll just quickly jump back into the slides to explain the different barcodes that you need to know for selling on Amazon. Okay, so these are some of the barcode key terms. Firstly, you've got UPC and EAN barcodes, and these are what are known as the unique barcode slash tracking identification systems that are used on pretty much all products in North America and Europe. Personally, I recommend you go with GS1 and these are the official barcodes for Amazon. However, they're not currently enforcing this, so you could go with a reseller such as Barcode Mania. Now, of course, going the official route with GS1 is going to be more expensive. I think it costs £130 per year, but you get up to a thousand barcodes essentially. Whereas with a reseller, you're looking at around four to five pound per barcode. So the UPC barcodes are what are used predominantly in Northern America and the EANs are used mainly in Europe. So as you can see on the right, there's an example of a barcode. So that is all the little black lines and every barcode also has a unique identifier. So that's the string of characters on the bottom. So you're gonna need a barcode for every single product you sell on Amazon and also a unique barcode for every variation of each product you sell on Amazon. So for the example of a dog car booster seat, we're gonna need a barcode for that product. But if we were to have two variations, say a black one and a blue one, then we would also need two more barcodes for each of those variations. So in total, we'd need three barcodes. So these are the kind of barcodes that you would see on a product in a store. But Amazon have their own internal barcode system and these are known as FN SKUs. And this stands for Fulfillment Network Stock Keeping Unit. And these are the barcodes Amazon use for keeping track of inventory levels in their own warehouses. So what will happen is we will create our product listing using a UPC or EAN barcode. And then once we've created that product listing, Amazon will then generate an FN SKU barcode that we can then put on the product. So I know this can be complicated at first, but basically what we're doing, we're taking the UPC barcode, creating a product on Amazon, then Amazon are giving us an FN SKU barcode, and that is what you want to apply to the product packaging. Okay, just a couple other key terms. Um, an ASIN is the unique identifier for a product on the Amazon catalog. So like I showed earlier, it's just usually a string of characters starting in a capital B. And then finally a SKU or a stock keeping unit. This is a unique identifier that you use to track your own products that you sell on Amazon. So for example, if you're selling a dog collar, you may call it DC01. Now this really doesn't matter what you call it and you can essentially have it as whatever you like. Okay, so at this point you've gone and got a barcode. What you're gonna to wanna to do is paste it in here. And then on this drop down, I select EAN because I'm gonna be mainly selling in Europe. But if you were to sell in America, you might wanna go with UPC. So for the product name, I'm just gonna go with a generic title for the product. Next, as we are creating a new brand with a new name, we're gonna put that in the brand name and manufacturer section. So I'm just gonna go with something like dog lovers. Okay, next up after this, you're gonna to wanna to go over to the offer section. 
So here you're gonna wanna put in the price you're gonna be selling at. So we'll go with 19.99. The seller SKU, that was that code that you used to identify your own products that I mentioned in the barcode section. So I'll just go with something like this. Next up, the condition is gonna be new. Next up, as Amazon is gonna be fulfilling this product, we wanna make sure that the second one is selected. I want Amazon to dispatch and provide customer service for my items if they sell. Okay, next up, if your product is gonna have variations, it's important at this stage that you click on variations and then select the kind of variation that you're offering. So Amazon doesn't make this very clear, but in this example, if we were to have a variation of two colors, then we would just select the color variation theme. Whereas if we were to have variations that had different colors and different designs, then we would select this one. I also like that Amazon uses the American spelling for color here, but then uses the English spelling here. So good old Amazon. So I'll just take you through an example. If we were to do a color variation, select color. And here it's saying you need to specify at least one variation child. So how variations work is you'll have a parent ASIN, which will be your main product. So in this example, the dog car seat, and then we'll have child listings associated to that parent listing so we'll have a child so we'll have a child listing for black car booster seat and we'll also have a child listing for white car booster seat so in this color section what we're going to do is put in two colors so i'm going to go with black and blue then click add variations like i said this is where you're going to need different barcodes for each variation so again you'd put in two different ean numbers into these two sections select new and then again put in your price for each variation okay obviously we can come back and edit certain parts of this listing such as the images so don't bother too much with that now just click save and finish now if we click on inventory and manage inventory you can see our listing for the premium dog car seat is there okay now we'll jump into how to actually pay your suppliers okay how to pay so for this i've used a traffic light system where red shows you should definitely stay away from this method orange is okay under certain circumstances and green is probably the most optimal way to pay suppliers okay first off a way i would not recommend is using a western union or a bank transfer without using trade assurance so you are essentially just sending the supplier money directly to their bank account with no repercussions if they don't deliver on your order so of course like i mentioned trade assurance is alibaba's system of ensuring a supplier meets key terms of your contract with them so the lead time the quality etc and by not using trade assurance and doing a direct bank transfer then we have no protection in the case that our product is wrong or the quality is just not good enough next up a method that is suitable if you trust your supplier is using a bank transfer but with trade assurance so again we're going to be using a bank transfer but this time we're going to create the trade assurance contract in alibaba so if anything goes wrong then we'll have that to stand on but in this way we just have one single layer of protection and that is trade assurance you know we can't go to our bank and ask for a refund if we don't get what we ordered that's why i recommend when you're starting out and especially if you're using a new supplier that you go with paypal or credit card with trade assurance. This way we've got two layers of protection. So we've got the credit card company or PayPal. But again, we also have the second layer from Trade Assurance. That way, if we need a refund for whatever reason, then we've got two companies that we can go to to get it. Now, before you pay, I recommend you get an inspection. So what this is essentially is a third party company in China goes to your supplier and does rigorous testing on the products. So they are essentially going to be making sure you get exactly what you ordered. So like I say, it's recommended in most cases. Things they check are the product quality. So they're going to look for little scratches or glue marks, stitching, you know, of course, this could depend on the products, but they are very stringent and analytical about making sure every single defect is spotted. They're also going to check the weight and dimensions of the product. So you'll actually get pictures of them on scales to show how heavy they are. They'll also take pictures of measuring tape on the product showing you how big it is. They'll also check the weight and dimensions of the shipping cartons. So once your product is packaged up and in the shipping cartons ready to get shipped, they'll actually check the weight and dimensions of each of the cartons and anything you ask them to check. So if you've got a product that you think could have a very specific defect, you know, you can tell them and they'll go make sure they have and they'll go make sure that your products don't have it so you'll get a report videos pictures and even a live stream if you want and the cost i pay for this is 130 pounds if you want to know the inspection company that i use just drop me a message and i'd be more than happy to share them with you okay one of the things that i was most confused about when i was first looking into fba was vat vat stands for value added tax and it is a 20 percent tax on any products sold in the uk you also have to pay vat of 20 percent on anything you import from outside the eu into the uk so of course when we import our goods from china we'll have to pay 20 percent vat on those goods now you don't just pay VAT of 20% on the value of the goods. You also have to pay it on any other cost associated with getting the goods to the UK. So that's any shipping costs you have to pay, insurance, duties. You have to pay 20% on the total figure for all those things. So there's two sides of VAT for FBA sellers. There's VAT for pre-registration businesses and there's VAT for post-registration businesses. Basically how it works is as soon as you hit annual turnover, so that's revenue of over 85 grand in one year, then by law you have to get that registered. But while you're under this threshold, you don't have to get that registered. Now of course, I'm not an accountant or a tax professional so take this information with a grain of salt but first let's take a look at VAT when you are not registered so what you pay VAT on pre-registration 
You of course pay VAT on the imports of goods, so the actual products you're bringing in from China to the UK. You also have to pay VAT on Amazon's FBA fee, so that's the referral fee, the fulfillment fee, and the storage fee. Now the Amazon revenue calculator I showed you earlier on in the video doesn't actually account for this. So I recommend actually creating a spreadsheet with all your fees in to actually work out your own profit margins after VAT. And you also have to pay VAT on any kind of business expenses, so that's software and just general business expenses, so like desks, chairs, stuff like that. But the benefit of not being VAT registered is you don't have to charge VAT on the products you sell. So basically when you sell one of your products, you don't have to pay HMRC any of the VAT of that sale. But when you have to get VAT registered or if you choose to, then what you pay VAT on essentially switches. You now have to pay VAT on your product sales. So if you sell a product for £20, then 20% or £4 of that will have to go as VAT to HMRC. But what you can do is reclaim VAT on any of your business expenses. So that'll be the import of the goods, the Amazon FBA fees and just general business expenses. Usually your profit margins will be a bit worse off as soon as you have to get VAT registered registered but of course it's just part of growing a business. Of course I'm not an accountant but from what I've read you can also reclaim VAT paid on six months prior to registration. So say you have to pay £20,000 on the import of your goods before you get VAT registered. If then within six months you get VAT registered then you can actually reclaim that VAT back. Of course talk to an accountant for up-to-date and accurate information on VAT. Okay next up we have got the important topic of shipping. Now of course there are two main ways you're going to be able to ship your goods from China and that is by air or by sea. Now you can also ship them by train but it's quite unlikely you'll be doing this so we'll just look at air and sea for this example. So we'll start off by looking at air. Now the price is based on what I've been quoted by my own freight forwarder and also the experience of other FBA sellers. So typically the price for air is around four to five pounds per kilogram. So if the total weight of your order is 200 kilograms, then you will be looking at paying around 800 to 1,000 pounds to ship it by air. It typically takes around seven to 10 days to ship something by air and then another two or three days in customs and then another two days getting into the Amazon warehouse. So in total, you're looking at around 10 to 14 days. So air is obviously suited best for lightweight products. So typically I would only consider it for products under 400 grams anymore and it's just gonna be a lot more cost effective to ship it by sea. Okay, so next by sea, it typically costs around 50p to a pound pound per kilogram to ship something by sea. However, I'm shipping my first product by sea and I wasn't quoted a price per kilogram. Instead, it was done on price bands based on volume. So for my shipment, it was placed in the band under three cubic meters and this was 300 pound. But for my order of a thousand units, this worked out at around 70p per kilogram. But even if I were to do 500 units by sea and 500 units by air, I would still be paying the 300 pound to ship the units by sea because it would still be classed as under three cubic meters. Obviously, the main downside of going by sea is it takes a a lot longer so you typically you're looking at around 30 days and then add on top of that another three to seven days waiting for a shipping slot and another three to five days going through customs and getting into the amazon warehouse so all in you're looking at more like 40 to 50 days it's also fair to say there's a lot more that could go wrong with sea shipping so you've got the ship having to go through the swiss canal so there's issues that could arise there you know it's not unheard of for containers to go missing but for larger products it usually does make sense to go by sea because it is so much cheaper so like i say it's ideal for larger products over 400 grams another thing to note is if your product is large and I mean large in terms of the volume, then your shipping quote will actually be done on the volume and not the weight. Okay, next up we've got freight forwarders. So what freight forwarders are, are companies that basically handle all the shipping details such as VAT, duties and insurance as soon as they leave your factory in China all the way to the Amazon warehouse. So obviously shipping from China to the UK requires a lot of paperwork. You know, you've got your duties, your insurance, all those kind of things you need to fill out. So the role of a freight forwarder is obviously to handle all this for you. So the reason I use a freight forwarder is it basically removes all the stress of filling in paperwork, finding duty codes, all those kind of little things that you could do wrong. So I just leave it to the professionals. So in my opinion, it is worth the cost. You know, it avoids the risk that a supplier might under declare the value of your goods. So if you were to go with DDP shipping or delivery duties paid, then you're basically giving the supplier all control of the shipping process to the Amazon warehouse. So they might try to save a bit of money by under declaring the goods so they don't have to pay as much on the VAT. However, the problem with this is if they get caught in customs doing this, then it is going to be your responsibility to sort it out. So you run the risk of losing the goods or being fined. Of course, not all suppliers are going to be like this, but some are known to do this. So some UK-based freight forwarders are John Good, Westbound Logistics, and Transglobal Express. I personally use Westbound Logistics and I've had no problems with them so far. You know, they've been really helpful and responsive. So yeah, I can highly recommend them. Okay, next up, we've got shipping terms. And these are terms that suppliers are going to use when discussing the price of their product. Okay, so there's three main shipping terms that suppliers use. Firstly, we've got EXW or XWorks. And this is just where the supplier makes the good and then it is your responsibility to have it collect 
collected from the warehouse, from the supplier, and then shipped to the UK. So if you're using Xworks, all the responsibility lies on you to get it shipped from China to the UK. Next up, we got FOB or freight on board. And this is where the supplier goes a step further and actually moves the goods to the port that they're gonna be shipped from. So of course they get the freight on board ready to be shipped. The responsibility then transfers over to you and then it is your responsibility to get them to the UK. Finally, there is DDP or delivery duties paid. And this is where essentially all the responsibility in terms of shipping falls on the supplier. So not only are they responsible for getting it to the port, they're also responsible for the shipping process, the payments of the different duties to customs, and then ultimately getting it to an Amazon warehouse. Okay, as you move down these different shipping terms, you know, the top one is most responsibility is going to fall on you. Whereas you move down, the responsibility moves more towards the supplier. Personally, I always go with freight on board because I want the supplier to get the products to the port, but then I want my freight forwarder to take over and then handle the shipping from there. It'll often be tempting to go with DDP because it's cheaper and it seems a bit easier. Personally, I recommend FOB just because of the risk of the supplier under declaring the value of the goods. Also, like I mentioned before, we've got a thing called duties and this is a tax on the import of goods. Now, the duties rate you're going to pay is going to depend on the type of product you're importing. So if you want to know the duties that you're going to be paying to import a good, just type in UK duties code finder and it's on the UK.gov website. And basically from there, you can go ahead and find your product. On average, it'll be between four and 5%. Okay, at this stage, our product has been made and we have paid for it. So the next thing to do is create a shipping plan on Amazon so that they can receive our product. Okay, to do this, first, you've got to go over to inventory and manage inventory. Next, find the product that you created earlier and want to send into Amazon. Then head over to the right where it says edit, click the down arrow and click send slash replenish inventory. Okay, we want to create a new shipping plan. From the ships from address, you can either put in the address that your freight forwarder gives you. So that's going to be a UK based address, or you can put in the address of your Chinese supplier. Just ask your freight forwarder which address will be best. My freight forwarder advised me to put in their UK based address. So that's what I've done. Next up, we've got to choose the item package type. So there's individual products. And this is more if you were doing something like online or retail arbitrage, and you were sending in boxes of lots of different products, then you would go with this. But since we're going to be sending in a load of the same units in one box, then we're going to go with case packed items. Now, an issue I had with my first shipment I did was that my supplier had done one carton that had a different amount of units as the other cartons. So in this case, I had to use the individual product section because I had to specify that one carton had less units in than the other cartons. So I mean, whichever you go with doesn't matter too much, but usually you'll be able to go with case packed items. So we're going to go ahead and click continue to shipping plan here because I've not put in the dimensions for the product itself when I was creating the listing, we're going to have to put it in here. So these are the dimensions for the product itself. So we'll just go with 20 by 20 by 10. And for the item weight, we'll just go one kilogram and then hit save. Okay, now we've got to put in the number of cases we're going to be sending in and the number of units in each case. So say we were sending in 10 boxes of 100 units each, then in units per case, we'd put 100 and number of cases we put 10. And as you can see, we've got a total units of 1000. So go ahead and click continue. Here we've got to specify that we'll be prepping our items. So under who prepares, just click seller. This is because we're going to be having our supplier apply the barcodes to our products and we don't want Amazon doing it because it will usually cost, I think about between 10 and 15p per unit. So just click continue again, click continue. And then all you got to do is click approve shipment and you will get a label that goes on the outside of each carton that you're sending into Amazon. So this is different to the FN SKU that we're going to be putting on the packaging for each product. This is going to be a shipping label that goes on the outside carton of each carton we send into Amazon. So they'll just scan it and they'll know that each carton contains 100 units of your product. So you'll send these shipping labels to your supplier and they'll apply them to the outside of each carton. Also, I'll just mention to get the FN SKU label that goes on your product packaging, you just need to go over to your product, click on the down arrow and click print item labels. And then again, you've just got to hit print item labels and then you'll get a PDF document with this FN SKU barcode on. And this is the barcode that you're going to send to your suppliers to put on your product packaging. Okay, now our products have been shipped to the Amazon warehouse, we now need to focus on creating the perfect product listing. So there are two main really important aspects of the product listing. Firstly, we've got to know the keywords that customs are using to find similar products to what you are going to be selling. So for the dog car booster seat example, not all customers are going to search dog car booster seat to find your product. Some might search up car seat for dogs. Some might search up booster seats for pets. So we need to know the keywords that customers are using to include them in our own listing. This way our product is more likely to be shown when a customer searches a keyword. The other aspect of the perfect product listing are the photos. So the photos is what actually is gonna grab the customer's attention and is gonna be the biggest factor in terms of our conversion rate. So in terms of photos, I recommend you pay a professional to do them unless you have the equipment necessary. So to do this, all you need to do is find a photographer, send them your products and pay them. Also, certain products are gonna benefit from from infographics. So these show the different features of your product. So if you were selling a double insulated coffee mug, you may use an infographic showing that your coffee mug keeps drinks warmer for 50% longer. Next up, you may want to get a 3D render done just to emphasize the quality of your product. So for the coffee mug example, you may get a 3D render done showing a cross section of the double insulated walls. This again will just show off the quality of your product. 
Finally, testimonials and collages of customers enjoying your product are also really gonna increase your conversion rate. Now for doing keyword research, my favorite tool by far is Helium 10. Now there are two tools that Helium 10 offers for product research. Firstly, there's Magnet, which is their general keyword research tool. And then there's Cerebro, which is their reverse async lookup tool. So we'll start with Magnet. So here, all we've got to do is enter the main keyword for our product. So I've gone with dog car booster seat. Make sure you're searching in amazon.co.uk and hit search. And now, as you can see, we have got 1300 keywords related to what we've put in. Now what I like to do is go to the match type and change it so it's just organic. I also like to look for a minimum search volume of 200. So this is monthly search volume. So this is the number of people on Amazon that have searched a particular keyword in a given month. And then again, click apply. And as you can see, we've now got 21 keywords. So I'm gonna sort by search volume. So you can just scroll through and read them. We've got dog car seat, dog accessories, dog car harnesses. So these are keywords I personally never would have thought of, but this is what customers on Amazon are searching to find our product. So we really need to include them in our listing to make sure we get as many sales as possible. Okay, next we'll have a look at their reverse async lookup tool. So go over here and click Cerebro. Okay, what a reverse async lookup tool allows us to do is take the ASIN for a particular product, put it into this tool, and it will pull out all the related keywords to that product. So what I like to do is find three or four related products to what I'm looking to sell, put their ASINs in, here and pull out all the main keywords they're using to get sales. Okay, so I'm just going to go with the three top sellers for dog car booster seat. So what I'm going to do is grab the ASINs for these three products and put them into Cerebro. So what I'm going to do for these three products is grab their ASINs and put them into Cerebro and then change it to amazon.co.uk and hit get keywords. As you can see, we have now got over 5,000 keywords related to dog car booster seats. So again, I like to put in some filters. So I'll put in a minimum search volume of 200. I'll change the match type to organic. And then under advanced filters, I put the competitor rank average between one and 25. And this just shows for every keyword where on average each product is ranking for it. Ranking competitors, I put a minimum of two. So this is just saying I only wanna see keywords where there's at least two of the three ASINs ranking for that keyword. And then I'm gonna hit apply. As you can see, we've now got 14 much more high value keywords. So if you scroll down, we've got dog car seats, car seats for dogs, dog car seat. Again, you can read through. Again, I like to sort by search volume. So now we know these are the main keywords for our product. So now we can actually create our listing using these keywords inside of Helium 10. So to do this, all we've got to do is scroll up and click export and to Frankenstein. And in Frankenstein, we can remove all the duplicate words. So as you can see, we've got dog many times here. So all you got to do is click process. So now you can see we've got all our keywords with no duplicates. Next up to actually create our listing, we're going to hit scribbles. Now what you want to do is change the marketplace to .co.uk and hit apply. As you can see, Helium 10 makes creating really optimized listings incredibly easy because now we can create our title, bullet points and description. And every time we use one of these keywords, so dog, for example, it gets crossed off. So now you can be sure you're using all the keywords you need to optimize your listing. So I'll go ahead and create a quick title. As you can see, just like that, I've created a title using most of the keywords I wanted. So again, I would repeat this process, but in this time using Magnet's keyword research tool. So this may give me 50 to 100 more generic keywords, and I would use these more for the bullet points and description. Okay, so we've had our product shipped to Amazon, but how do we get it selling? For the example of the dog car booster seat, once we first get our product into Amazon, if someone were to search dog car booster seat, it's very unlikely our product will be shown because Amazon favors products that have a higher sales velocity, meaning they are more likely to show a product that sells 200 units a month than 100 units a month. So in order for our product to be shown when someone searches up dog car booster seats, we need to start generating some sales velocity. And there are three main ways to do this. First way involves using a launch service. So I've gone with viral launch in this case. And this is a service designed specifically at launching your product. So the benefit of this is you are almost guaranteed to give away the number of units you need to give away. However, to achieve this, they often recommend a heavy discount of 90%. So you're likely gonna be losing money on every unit that gets given away. But of course you should make it up on the long run once your product gets selling organically. Another downside is it costs 80 pound to use this in the UK marketplace. Place. However, this is still quite cheap because I think in America it costs around $400 or $500. Okay, the next way is to use a Facebook ad launch. This is essentially where we're going to use Facebook ads to give away our products. So the benefit of this is there is more control in terms of the discount we're offering. So we can choose anything in between 50 and 80%. This way we're going to be losing less money on every unit we give away. However, a downside of this is Facebook ads can be very tricky when getting started. So unless you've got some experience with Facebook ads, you're going to have to learn how to do them from scratch. It can also be quite difficult to ensure the number of giveaways is achieved. So say, you need to give away 100 units over eight days, it's going to be quite hard to give away exactly those 100 units. Whereas with a launch service, you can be pretty certain you'll be able to give those 100 units away over eight days. Okay, and the other main way is a heavy PPC strategy. And this is where you use Amazon's pay-per-click advertising system to get your product selling. So with the example of the dog car booster seat, since our product is not going to be shown when 
when a customer searches this, we can actually pay Amazon to show our product. And then we're going to be charged every time a customer clicks on our ad. That's why it's called pay per click, because you are paying for every time a customer clicks on your ad. The benefit of this is it's likely to be favored by Amazon as you're using their own system. And they're also going to be generating advertising revenue. So it's possible they're going to favor these kind of sales over a giveaway. So they are three effective ways at launching your product and it just depends on which best fits your needs and goals as to which you're going to go with. Okay, so now we've got our product selling, how do we get reviews? So of course, reviews are a massive factor in getting sales. So these are the main ways you can use to get reviews. Firstly, ask your friends and family to try your product. There is nothing in Amazon's terms of service that says you can't ask your friends and family to try your product and then them leaving you a review saying what they think about the product. What Amazon doesn't want is incentivized reviews. So they don't want you giving your product away for 95% off in exchange for a positive review. You can also include a product insert saying something along the lines of, we'd love to hear what you think about our product. So this is just a small piece of card that says something along the lines of thank you so much for buying our product. We hope you love it and we'd love to hear what you think. Next up you can use a email follow-up sequence. So this is a service you can set up so that customers when they buy your product they actually get put into an email follow-up sequence. And not that I need another reason as to why I think Helium 10 is the best software for Amazon sellers. They are also launching their own email follow-up sequence later this month. So I'll be sure to do videos on that when that comes out. So a simple email follow-up sequence you can do is the first email could be hope you enjoyed the product. Second email could be have you got any questions? Are there any issues? that you are having with the product. And then the third email could be something along the lines of, we'd love for you to share your experience with other customers. And at this stage, you could link them to the Amazon review your product page. Okay, so what about one star reviews? One star reviews can really hurt a product, especially if it's new and doesn't have a lot of five star reviews. So one star reviews can't always be avoided, as you can see in the bottom right, but there's certainly a lot of things we can do to try and reduce them. The first and biggest thing I would recommend to avoid one star reviews is just source a high quality product. Now I think the vast majority of problems that Amazon FBA sellers run into could be avoided by just following this rule. Now you achieve this by getting a sample and getting a rigorous inspection done once your goods are made. This way you can be certain on the quality of the products that you're getting. Next up, offer a 30 day money back guarantee on your list and branding materials. This way, if a customer is not happy with the product and is about to leave a one-star review, they might come to you and ask for a refund, and this way they are less likely to leave a one-star review. Next, you can include a contact email address on your product insert and packaging. This way, if a customer has any issues with your product, they can come and contact you and you can resolve them. Now, this might just now this might just mean giving them a refund, but this is certainly a lot better than getting a one-star review. Next, you can include an email in your email sequence that asks if the customer is having any issues with the product. This way, you can reach the customer before they even think about reaching you. So, if a customer is having a bad experience and they're about to leave a one-star review, that email might just pop up in their inbox and you can resolve that issue before they leave a one-star review. Finally, while one-star reviews can be really painful, don't worry too much because you can dispute them with Amazon. And I've heard in a lot of cases, you can actually get them removed. Okay, so now you know how to go from finding a product all the way to getting it shipped to an Amazon warehouse. So what I want to talk about now is the incredible opportunity and the power of Amazon FBA. I think this is best illustrated with an example. So let's take a product with a 50% technical ROI and that just means for every £100 we put into it, we're going to get a 150 pound out and also a stock turnover rate of three months. So that means it takes three months from when the product arrives in the Amazon warehouse until we sell out. Okay, so say we invest £3,000 into a product in January. Then three months later, we would have £4,500. And then if we reinvest all that money again into the product, then we would end up with £6,750 by July. So as you can see, we've more than already doubled our initial investment. And then three months later, we would have £10,125. And then finally, a year after when we started, we'd be left with £15,187.50. So this graph just shows the incredible speed with which you can grow an Amazon FBA business if you reinvest all your profits. And I must stress that you reinvest as much of your profits as possible to really experience this incredible growth. Okay, so you get it. You understand what an incredible opportunity this is. Yet, why do so many people fail to take action? Well, the biggest reason is most people don't have a why. So what is a why? Well, your why is your deepest and most significant reason for doing something. Now, as humans, we are naturally lazy creatures. You know, we're wired to take the path of least resistance. So to put in hours of work and take the risk to create a business takes a lot of effort. So you're going to need a damn good why if you're going to succeed at this. Because the truth is most people are going to watch this video, get inspired for a couple hours, but they're not going to take action. And I don't want this to be you. So the more emotional intensity you can attach to your why, the more likely you are to follow through and take action. So instead of using reasons like I want to be rich, I want to be famous, use reasons that carry more emotional intensity. So decide you're no longer going to beg your boss for that one week off a year. Decide that you're no longer going to accept a life of mediocrity. So some good whys are to escape a nine to five, to never ask permission from a boss again. Give your family the financial abundance that they deserve. And a big one for me is to live a life of freedom to do what you want, when you want, and with whom you want. Now, of course, these are just 
just examples and I recommend that you spend some time thinking about your own why and decide on one that has meaning towards your own life because this way it's going to carry a lot more emotional intensity. So pick a why and think about it daily. Next up, I want you to forget motivation. Now I know after watching this video, you're probably really excited and wanting to get started, but just remember motivation is bullshit. Nothing significant ever happens in a few hours of excitement. Instead, you need ways to guarantee your success. First off, you want to set goals that inspire you. So my goal is to do £100,000 in revenue within my first year of selling on Amazon. Now I think about this goal every day and it forces me to take action with my business. Now your goal doesn't have to be monetary. It could be to quit your job, to support your family, but just pick a goal that is meaningful to you and that inspires you. Next up, I recommend you create a vision board. And this is essentially a collage of all your dreams and all the things you want to achieve. So for this, what you want to do is get images that are symbolic to things you want to achieve in your life. So on mine, I have images of my dream car, so a BMW i8 and a Ferrari 458. I also have pictures of the countries I want to travel to, so America and France. I also have a picture of the kind of house I want to live in. So make it unique to your life and your dreams. Next, something I do is I think about my goals and vision in the present as though I've already achieved them. If you want more details on why I do these things, then just look up the law of attraction and you'll find loads of strategies for achieving the kind of things you want in your life. I also think it's important to create a habit of spending at least one hour every day on your business. So more often than not, this is going to be spent doing product research. You want to have a list of as many potential products as possible so that when your first product starts selling, you can start sourcing your next product. So this way you can be able to achieve that rapid growth that I showed in a previous slide. Okay, so that has been my full guide to starting an Amazon FBA business in the UK in 2019. Now this video took well over 10 hours to make. So if you found it useful, I'd really appreciate if you dropped a like and commented what you thought. One of the reasons why I spent so long creating this video is I truly believe Amazon FBA is one of the greatest opportunities we have right now. So I wanted to give you the best chance of starting and succeeding with this business. Because if you start today, then there really is no reason why you shouldn't be a millionaire in five years. And I don't know about you, but that sounds quite appealing to me. If you want to contact me, you can reach me on Instagram at andrewlowesuk. Also, if you are interested in following my own FBA journey, then please be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be posting loads of videos keeping you up to date with it. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.